to God, it's going to be very hard to resist the enemy. Okay? Jesus gave us a perfect example of what of a lifestyle we should have. When he went to the wilderness, he was doing what? Remember the story when Jesus went to the wilderness? What was he doing? Fasting and praying, right? If your faith is not in the right place, you're gonna you're gonna mess up. And the only way to resist Satan is how? Having your faith where? In Christ. That's the only way. Because he's gonna look at you, he's gonna laugh at you. But a person without prayer, a person without a life of relationship with God, a person that does not know his word, he knows the word better than you and I. And he's gonna look at you and say, like, look at this clown trying to resist me. No, I, I know you don't pray. I know you don't have a relationship with God. What do you think is going to happen when you try to rebuke me and resist me? Nothing. Because the power you try to access is not connected to you the way it should be because you're not submitting yourself unto it. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. It puts you this way. How are you going to go to the bank and get money out of the bank if you don't got a job and work and put money into the bank? Mm. That makes sense. So how, how do you think you're going to have God? God, don't get me wrong. The Holy Spirit doesn't abandon us. God doesn't abandon us. But man, how much more useful we are in the hands of God and how much more he can help us if we're submitted unto his presence, unto his obedience, unto what he wants us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is no joke. It's hard. I'm not telling you this to preach this because it's easy. It's hard to do. It's challenging. But man, the more you press in and submit yourself, and when those attacks come, that the enemy comes to disturb your peace, comes to distract you, comes to tempt you, comes to put those lies in your head and your ears and tell you that what you're doing, you're wasting your time. And you know what? Look at how all your friends are having a good time and all your peers are having a good time. Look how this person has that. This, these people have this over here. And you could be making that money. You could be doing those things. <clears throat> and a lot of times it doesn't have to be bad stuff. It could be perfectly great stuff. But it's not what God has meant for you to do. Where, where does God want you? Who we have here? About 20 people maybe almost? 20 different plans. 20 different paths. God has 20 different things for each and every one of you to do. And the, the coolest thing about God is that we all come together and all bring our giftings, our talents, and our ability that God's given us together to complete a greater task. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 But we have to submit ourselves to God. We have to. And that's just basically trusting him. That what he said that he was going to do, he was going to do it. No matter what. <coughs> <laughs> in order to resist the enemy, we have to be submitted. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. too quiet. Come on. You, think just, you don't have to admit, mm -hmm. think about that. Have you ever and then you feel the hurt? Like, man, I should have done that. I feel bad. Right? He says you should purify yourselves, repent, and grieve. Feel afflicted. Why? Why? Because you've put your faith into something else and not kept your faith in Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying to them. Because you've not kept your relationship, you should feel bad. Mm. You adultering nation. You adulterous people. Remember when we talked about adultery, right? Was what? What does being an adulterous person is in the scriptures spiritually? Lusty for things in the world. What else? Turn away from that, right? Stepping out on God, like I compared it to a marriage, right? That when he called Israel an adulterous generation, that they would one minute be serving God, the next minute not serving God. They'll have God here, then they have their idols right next to hmm. their prayer room. Because they were adultery and they were back and forth. They were not purified in their hearts. He says you should feel grieved in your hearts that you're being adulterous. You need to repent from the mess that you're doing and turn back to God. Depend on me to be your source. Depend on me <coughs> to 
to give you joy, to fulfill your needs, to give you peace, to be the source of your strength. Right? Because what do people do? What are some of the things that people do to fulfill those things I just said? What are some of the things people, what are the outlets they use for those feelings to be filled, those voids? Drugs. Drugs. What else? Sex. What else? Alcohol. Pornography. Right? Gangs. Hurting other people, robbing, murdering, right? That's, you're going to hell. He said, <laughs> it just could be <coughs> simply not having faith in him and just coming and sitting down and warming up the pew. Just repent from that mess and trust in me. This is all, it's just simple faith, young people. Faith that Jesus Christ can do it all for you. Amen. That's all it is. There's no abracadabra, no special magic hat. Things come flying out for you. It's just faith in God. But he's saying that we have to be purified, grieving, showing true repentance, and, and be sorry for our offense and wail, and we should be broken. That's the next one. I gave you the next one. Wait, right? Weeping before the presence, that means showing us a symbol, a symbol of brokenness before God. That's what He wants because we are what? What are we called to do every day of our lives? What are we? We're worshippers, right? What did you say? Nothing. No. We're worshippers. We should be worshiping Him in everything we do, and He wants us in His presence, praying, seeking. Him. But he's saying we need to turn from our wickedness. We need to turn and stop doing the things that we've been doing. We need to stop trusting, saying, I trust in you, Lord, but I'm going to go over here. And I trust in you, Jesus, but I'm going to try this over here. And I trust in you here, but I'm going to go meditate and do something over here. And I trust in you, but I'm going to go read these books and see how I can help myself. And we're going to, he's like, make up your mind. Because he's going to go mad, going in a circle, getting frustrated. And not allowing him, <coughs> excuse me, to do the work. I had a cough all day. The devil is a liar. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Anybody want to add to that? Anybody have anything to put in to that dialogue? Do you agree with that? Why? Want to see a castle? Right here. But it wasn't until Peter took that other leg and wrapped right on the outside of that boat. Hmm. And he started walking, that faith began to be come go into action. And God reacts when we act. Hmm. Okay? When he said, focus on me. And he walked and he watched in Christ. And his faith was in Christ. The storm was raging. Hell and high water. Let's put into that storm, let's call it financial stress, sexual identity, homosexuality, drugs, alcohol, violence at home. All these problems are raging around Peter, but his eyes are focused on Christ, and he's doing what Christ is able to do, walking on that water. But the moment Peter took his eyes off, what happened to Peter? He started to sink. And when he started to sink, did Jesus keep on walking? What does scripture say he do? Huh? Stretch out his hands. That's the type of God that we serve. <laughs> Come on. Even that when he fell, he didn't say, well, that's what you get for not focusing on me. <laughs> Christ extended his hand and pulled Peter up. So I hope this helps you understand. I'll answer your question. God reacts when we act. Yes, our faith has to be in Christ. And our actions of our faith have to be in Christ. Not in all what we can do. Because we could get caught up into, oh, I'm doing this and I can do it. No. God, I'm going to take this step of faith. Sometimes we're waiting for it. We could be like Gideon and we're flipping the leaf fleece back and forth. And Lord, I want the fleece to be dry and the ground to be wet. No, now I want the ground to be dry and this to be wet. And I want, and God, like, just make a move. Take a step of faith. If you really know who I am, the well being is all spiritual condition, uh, situation of the heart. All 
All the other things are either big or leave it. But what we're talking about here is having a spiritual right place with God. He says, seek you first the kingdom of heaven, and all these other things shall be added unto you. And again, what's in the will of God in your life. Amen. There's a generation being raised up poorly in the word of God right now. You understand everything. I've said it for every now. How many times I tell you this from the beginning of the teaching? Everything's spiritual. Look at everything spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, you stand to your feet.